Okay, so Junior Roberts here. So we're looking at this question, right? Um, in preparation for the CSEC physics exam. So this question is on the topic of hydrostatics. So we're going to get right into it. So the first thing it says here is where to state Archimedes' principle. Now we can recall that Archimedes' principle, so we're going to say that this states, states that for an object partially or fully submerged in a fluid, the upthrust force, right? The upthrust force is equal to the weight of the volume of the fluid displaced, right? Of the fluid displaced. So what it simply means is that, well, first of all, we know whenever we place an object in a fluid, for instance, if we place an object in a container with water, right, we're going to see right away that the water level will rise because the object that we place in the, in the water, in this case, which is a fluid, will actually displace some of that water. So the water level rises. Now, what Archimedes', Archimedes is principally saying is that the upthrust on the object, which is the upward force acting on that object, as we place it in that fluid, is going to be equal to whatever weight of the water that was displaced by that object. Alright, so let's continue. <coughs> so next question says that the hot air balloon, as shown in figure 1 above, has a volume of 700 cubic meters, and the density of the air inside the balloon is 0.9 kilogram per cubic meter then now it says no the mass of the balloon the mass of the balloon's material and load is 280 kilograms and we're to calculate the mass of the air inside the balloon all right so if you look at this question right here we see that we're given the volume right of the balloon right because the balloon has a volume of 700 cubic meters and the density of the air inside the balloon is 0 0.9 kilogram per cubic meter <clears throat> we're then told that the mass of the balloon's material and load is 280 kilograms and we're to calculate the mass of the air inside the balloon so in this case now they just simply want us to find the mass of the air that's going to be inside this balloon so to do that now we're going to consider the formula that relates volume density and mass so we know that the density, rho, is equal to the mass of the substance divided by its volume. Now in our case, we know that the volume V is equal to 700 cubic meters. The density is given as 0 0.9, and that's the density of the air, 0 0.9, 0 kilogram per cubic meters. And we're trying to find the mass, which is unknown. So again... What we see is that this balloon it has a volume of 700 cubic meters so whatever air is inside this balloon will also be 700 cubic meters because the amount of space that can be filled with air is equal to or equivalent to the volume of that balloon so now once we're here now we can just simply uh, rearrange our formula so density is equal to mass over the volume so the mass then now will be equal to the density multiply by the volume. So all we simply do, multiply here by V, multiply here by V, these two cancel, leaving mass is equal to density times the volume. So now it's just a matter of substituting and calculating. So density is 0 0.90 kilogram per cubic meter, and the volume is 700 cubic meter. So now, taking the calculator, We just simply say 
0 0.9 multiplied by 700 and we're going to get 630 kilograms <coughs> right so we get 630 grams for the mass of the air so now continuing further down it says that we have to determine the total weight in newtons of the material load and the air so now we just calculated the mass of the air and we are told that the mass of the balloon's material and load is 280 kilograms so in order for us to find the total weight right of the material load and air we first have to find the total mass so we're going to say that the total mass m is going to be equal to m1 plus m2 in this case we're, we're considering m1 to be the mass of the load and the material so that's 280 kilograms so 280 kilograms and m2 is the mass of the air which is 630 kilograms so now total mass then now m is going to be equal to 280 kilograms plus 630 kilograms and this would work out to be taking a calculator quickly so we say 630 plus 280 and we get 910 kilograms <coughs> No, we want to find the weight. So now we can say now that the weight W is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength. So now we get weight W is equal to the mass, which is this value right here, 910 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 newtons per kilogram. Per kilogram. So now. Multiplying this out, we're going to get 9,100 newtons, right? So this would be this question right here. So we're going to continue. So next now it says that the ball, <coughs> so it says, you know, that the balloon remains stationary about 100 meters above the ground. State what forces are acting on the balloon and explain how they result in no motion. All right, so when the balloon is in the air, right, we're going to have two forces acting on the balloon, right? So we're going to have the downward force. So we're going to have the, the force due to the weight of the balloon. Right, which simply means the total balloon in terms of its material and the load as well as the trapped air. So we're gonna have the force due to the weight of the balloon. Next, we're gonna have we're gonna have the force due to the up thrust right um, of the air, right? on the balloon okay so if this is our balloon here this is the balloon let's say like that so that's the outer balloon with the contents right we're gonna have a downward force due to the weight which is weight right and then also we're gonna have the upward force which is due to the up thrust right on the balloon now it says nowhere to state or to explain how these results in no motion so now since we have no motion now it simply means in other words the balloon is not going up neither is it going down so the reason why that is the case is so the balloon remains stationary since the upward force right up thrust which is the upward force equal or is equal to the weight of the balloon now when this occur 
right, we're going to have a situation where we're going to have the net force being zero. And if the net force is zero, we're going to get no motion. Okay? So now, let's continue. So it says now that if the density of the air outside the balloon is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter, calculate the weight of the air which is displaced by the balloon. <coughs> so now, for this question, we have to consider that, okay, if the balloon is stationary, and we're saying that the weight of the balloon, right, and the obtus are both equal, that is why we get the balloon being stationary, we can use that information to help us right here. So we're told that the density of the air outside is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. Now we can remember from Archimedes', Archimedes principle that the weight of the fluid displaced is always equal to the upthrust. So now, in this case, because the weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the upthrust, and we see that the upthrust and the weight of the object, in this, case, in this case which is the balloon, are equal, what we can say now is we can say that the weight of the balloon is equal to the upthrust, right? And that is also equal to the weight of air that was displaced, right? So we can make that statement right here. So now, if that's the case, now let's say we need to calculate the weight of the air which is displaced. So therefore, now all we can say is that the weight of the air, so let's say the weight of the air. Right, is going to be equal to the weight of the balloon. Right, so the weight of the air is going to be equal to the weight of the balloon. Right, which is going to be equal to the weight of the balloon, which we calculated before, <coughs> was 9,100 newtons. So we're going to say that is equal to 9,100 9, Newtons. Now, alternately, we can consider the fact that, okay, if this balloon has a volume of 700 meter cube, it simply means that it's going to displace a volume that is equivalent to 700 meter cube. Because if the balloon takes up 700 meter cube, which is its volume, it's going to displace that volume of air. So now, we can now consider that the density rho, again, is mass divided by the volume. Now, in this case, now we're trying to find the weight. So first of all, let us say we try to find the mass. So we're going to say that the mass m is equal to the density multiplied by the volume. So in this case, now, the density is the density of the air, which is on the outside, which is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter and we multiply by the volume of air which is again is going to be equivalent to the volume of the balloon which is 700 meter cube now calculating this let's take the calculator so we say 1.3 times 700 and we get 910 kilograms now, to find the weight now, we just simply say that the weight W is mass times gravity, which is 910 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram, right? And we're going to see that this is going to be equivalent to 9,100 newtons. So the weight is going to be equal to 9,100 newtons, which is exactly what we got, got right here. Okay? So now, let's see what's next. So the next question now says that, explain why the balloon begins to rise when the air is heated to a higher temperature. So we're going to say that the balloon rises due to the warm air, or the hot air, let's say hot air, the hot air, air being less dense than 
the air around it. So remember, when we heat the air, what we're going to see is that the molecules, they're going to spread out, and as a result of them spreading out, they're going to increase the volume. Now, by increasing the volume, that's going to decrease their density. So once the density is decreased, now what you're going to see now is that the air inside the balloon is going to be less dense than the air around it, so it's going to rise. So that's our question right here. So again, Junior Roberts, if there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, you can post it below in comments, and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this if it was helpful. Click subscribe on the bell so you're notified whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.